Hi, everyone. I'm Eric Bowling. Welcome to Cashing In. Our Cashing In crew this week, Wayne Rogers, Jonathan Honig, Michelle Fields, and Mr. Robert Beckel. Welcome, everybody. Americans thinking twice before opening their wallets. Consumer confidence tanking to a seven-month low as people are becoming more uneasy about the job market and their income. One main reason discussed with D.C. and the health care law. Wayne, shoppers freaking out because of Obamacare sticker shock. What do you say? Well, the biggest problem, I think, Eric, is the uncertainty. You know, there's uncertainty in the law. Nobody knows what it says. Nobody knows what the rules are. So businesses can't plan ahead. In fact, a lot of businesses are, because they know of the, the restriction about employment, and they're going to part-time employment so they don't have to pay this. That's one thing. So on the other side, the people who, who are affected by it, there are people getting ca their policies canceled. I think there's over 5 million so far today in the United States that have been canceled, and they haven't signed up that many people. A lot of people don't need this. For example, there was a woman here, my makeup person here, has said the following. She doesn't want to have children, so she's not interested in having that uh, thing about the child care part of it. She's not interested in some of the things that she's going to be forced to carry, and those are all cost to her. That means everybody's disposable income is going to come down, a la the lady on, that we just saw, and that means less spending. That's all bad for the economy. Yeah, and John, uh, Walmart came out and said that this year may, they're spending, their expectations, spending may actually go down probably because of uh, the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare. Yeah, spend, spending is down. We know that hiring has been down for months and months. And Eric, what creates confidence? What creates you know, assurance in an economy? Is it government intervention? No, in fact, government intervention creates the paranoia, creates the fear. I mean, what makes confidence is the self-esteem, mm -hmm. knowing that you're dealing with reality. But Obamacare essentially says, just submit and we'll take care of the rest. How can you have any confidence in a system that its own creators are admitting is a train wreck Obamacare is? All right, Bob, now you're, you're chuckling, you're laughing there a little bit, but the, the reality is, is that Americans are going to have to shell out more money, a lot of them, for, for Obamacare. First of all, I, I feel really badly about honing in his stock portfolio, number one. It's been going through the roof, and, and uh, so I could really feel, feel sympathetic for him. I'll give you a loan if you need one. That woman's well, not going to go to the that, movie. Bob, what does that have to do with anything? What it has what to, do to do with anything is this economy is a lot stronger than you're making out to be, and to make a projection well, has something to do with well, Obamacare. But, it's but, silly, but, and it's stupid. The American people aren't well, feeling that. The stupid. American people aren't feeling that. You have no, you have no evidence that this thing is affected by Obamacare. Go ahead, John. Go ahead. Wait a minute, well, it was my block, he interrupted. Well, but, but, but you, you know, you took, you took a shot at John. I want him to react. I'll, I'll give you a shot. All right, go ahead, react go back, John. John. Mill millions of people who've lost their confidence, and who've lost their confidence specifically because of Obamacare. Again, Eric, just as Social Security uh, recipients have to worry, am I going to get the increase? Medicare recipients have to worry, is the doctor going to continue to take Medicare? Government intervention creates the paranoia. It doesn't solve it as Obamacare specifically. Yeah. Okay, go hold on, Michelle, hold on. Go ahead, Bobby. Now, well, now, I, I, can I just address... John, can I just address your issue about yeah. the stock market going up. That has really nothing to do with anything that's going on <laughs> with the economy. It has everything to do I with know, President, or, I'm sorry, the Fed printing $85 billion a month. A lot of these companies have Go got ahead. very strong fundamentals. But the thing about Matt, see, what Jonathan just said is important because what for most right-wingers, this is what this boils down to. You want to do away with entitlements. He wants to do away with Medicare. Medicaid, they won't say it. Uh, because it's bad politics, but the fact of the matter no, is, no, but, but, if it were up to Jonathan, I, I be, the government would be nothing else but aircraft unsafe. carriers. Look how unsafe the so-called so safety net is. I mean, look how tremendously unsafe it is. And Obamacare is just the latest example. It's supposed to make people feel safe or more confident. Social Security is unsafe, Jonathan. Right, guys, we will do that in the, uh, people in the worry break. We'll argue day. this, you know, the merits of welfare programs. Michelle, please give Bob back a little bit of a break. He's got. Uh, chronic Democrat itis. It's not terminal. It does make a lot of people around him sick at times. But go ahead. Is the economy going to suffer because of Obamacare? Absolutely. You know, Obamacare is leading to the deterioration in confidence. Right now, consumer confidence is well below the historical norm. And it's the lowest it's been in seven months. And the reason why is people were not expecting to pay this much for premiums. They certainly were not expecting to get cancellation letters because Obama promised that that wouldn't happen. For a lot of people, health care is not a, uh, an option. It's a necessity. And they were not expecting to pay that much money. And so they don't have that money to go out and go shopping for Christmas, Bob. That is just how it is right now. That's what the American you, people you, are you feeling. Mis you misspoke of one thing. It's not that it's a right. It's not a privilege. What's a right? Health care <laughs> in this country. 
Well, well and according to you people, of course, it's not. If you could afford to pay it, well, you rich people can afford to go to the best doctors you want to go to. Okay. And a lot of people... But, but can we clear too, that up? Well, well, let's just, let's, let's just clear that up. Let's, let's, let's clear that up. It, it's a right because... Who says it's a right? Because President Obama says it's a right? No, because, because the Constitution because says it's a right to life. Because Bob Beckel says it's a right. Yeah, but the Constitution... Go ahead, John, you take this one. A right is a right to action. It's not a right to a freebie from someone else. It's not a right to impinge on others' life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Is Medicare by freebie? Sacrifices to the greater is good. Is Medicare it's freebie? A re it's an immoral redistribution is of wealth. Is Medicare Bob, I'm a against freebie? That as well. But you're making the point for me, Bob. All these social safety nets, Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, are fundamentally unsafe. They're what make up the $100 trillion unfunded People liability in this country. People have paid into that program. It's called FICA. By I know force, you don't have to Bob, worry about it, but a lot forced, of people do. Bob, I think to pay into it. Uh, hold on, Just go ahead, Michelle. I think we can all Obamacare agree. Now. We can all agree that we want everyone to have health care, but we don't feel that it's necessary to have everyone paying for it. Because right now, we are the young people are paying for everyone else to have health care under Obamacare. I want everyone to have health care, but I think it's unfair to make us young people yeah, but, subsidize right, right. older let me, and sicker yeah, people. Let me bring, and Bob, let me bring and Bob, Wayne in, John. John, hold on. I, I, I got to bring Wayne Bob's in this. rolling his eyes. Is it? But, Submit. But, 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 Just Wayne, hold on. Don't stop, ask questions. John, stop, stop. Wayne, let, let's talk about that for a second. Is it a right or is it a privilege, health care in America? Well, I, I, I'm not sure that that's the point here. The point is of the cost of this that Michelle said. For example, I, I, I talked about the makeup lady. Her deductible went up $80. Uh, her cost went up $200. She cannot afford it. She's been, had her policy canceled. She is out of the system. So all of this that is dedicated to make the poorer people, as Bob would have us believe, to come into the system is, in fact, rejecting those people. I'm not saying, I'm not going to debate with him about health care, whether it's right, wrong, or indifferent. I yeah. say this particular plan is a horrible plan. It was badly conceived, the and it should be trashed and redone. Go ahead, Michelle. The reality is, is that Obamacare is a mess. We know that. This is what we're living in right now. And Bob Eckel is just trying to change the, the subject to this right. philosophical debate because I, he doesn't I, want to I, talk listen, about I think it's a mess, mess, too. I think I, I was for a single-payer plan. I wasn't for this. Well, see, and therein lies the problem oh, there, Bob, because once you go right. to single-payer, you're talking a completely different yeah, category, well, yeah. know, which we don't you. have time it's, for. I know. It's the new deal that could come back to bite us. Concerns around the world mounting just days after the U.S. eased sanctions on Iran. The agreement, unfreezing up to $7 billion in assets for Iran. In return, Iran is supposedly going to temporarily slow down with the nukes. But more critics are warning Iran simply cannot be trusted. Michelle, could this plan lead to a long-term threat to our financial and national security? Absolutely. Look, this plan is terrible. The deal does not make Iran uh, reduce their nuclear pro program in proportion to the amount of aid that we are giving them. They came to the negotiating table with a shattered economy. They were desperate, and it's very unlikely that we're going to see them in this type of position again anytime soon. So we should have taken advantage of that. And what we did was we basically legitimized Iran to countries like China and to businesses that now don't see Iran as toxic anymore. So they walked away with a great deal. We walked away with nothing, and we were supposed to, we're the ones who were not weak going into this negotiation. Now, Bob, you were, uh, I believe, the youngest deputy assistant secretary of state at one time. Um, I consider Iran on the same level of trustworthiness as Bernie Madoff, but you well, have I, a different I, 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 would, uh, I would agree with that, but this is what Michelle just said. It's, it's just with all due respect, I, I admire you greatly, but uh, if, frankly, you all who are commenting on this don't know much about what you're talking about. The fact of the matter is we did degrade. They have now, they cannot... Uh, take centrifuges and make the grade level you need for nuclear weapons, one. Two, the Germans are in doing the inspection of the okay. best in the world. Three, it's a six-month <laughs> deal. Four, you have to have new centrifuges in order to finish their program. That's been stopped. Now, it, it, what's the alternative? The alternative is we've said nothing, we've done nothing. In the meantime, they've moved ahead with the nuclear w program. At least this gives us an opportunity to see. They this may decide to screw months, us. Though, Bob. Wait a this second, is six wait a second. Months. Please pay some attention to the details of this agreement. It is six months. It does degrade their weapon system because it does not allow them to make uh, weapon-grade plutonium. Right. And it also has German and U.N. Okay. inspectors right. in there doing something about it. Guys, so Michelle, you just Michelle, don't know what you're talking Michelle, about. Hang on. I, I, I'm going to agree months. with you, Michelle. I think you do know what you're talking about. I think Bob is a little bit off base on the 20% the, the um, enriched uranium, which is weapons-grade, which they still have, and they're not, yeah, not going to get rid of that. Go ahead, John, your, your call.
Yeah, six, six months, and, you know, the, the Iranians are proclaiming about how this deal still allows them to enrich uranium, to Michelle's point. This, this emboldens them. This legitimizes them in the world stage. It's ironic, Eric. I mean, the president is so quick to use force, sanctions, if you will, against Americans for not signing up for Obamacare, but so hesitant to use them against our known enemies. Iran is not a wild card, card here. They are the known a large state sponsor of terrorism for 30 plus years, and we appease them. We essentially commit to suicide against yes. them by not keeping the pressure on. Right, and right. Said to Michelle's point, sending them eight billion dollars in aid. Wayne, are we are we rushing the gun, or releasing the seven billion dollars in assets to Iran? Even if it's not a lot of money on on the grander uh, scale of things, they still are going to use that money. I say keep those sanctions in place. What do you say? Well, Eric, let me ask you a question. Why were the sanctions? Why did they come to the table now? Because the sanctions worked. Yes. That's why they're coming to the table now. Yeah. They're not coming to the table because Obama is a great negotiator. They're coming to the table because they're desperate and they need to. That worked. The sanctions are working. I read some idiotic editorial in the New York Times where the guy said, well, the alternative of this is war. Either we have war or we have this negotiation. Well, he's a fool. Uh, what works is, of course, is sanctions. It did work. Look, the peace of the world was maintained from 1812, Waterloo to 1914, World War I, by men who understood the great section of the balance of power. This is a balance of power. We had the power. We have sanctions. That's what brought them to the table. Wayne, Wayne, yes. Wayne just, just a, a point of reference here. This $7 billion was uh, confiscated from the Iranians in 79 and 80. This is a very small percentage of what the Iranian assets uh, that have been frozen around the world. The real sanction against them is oil. But leaving mm -hmm. that aside, I get back to my fundamental question. If you do nothing, if you let it keep going the way it is, you have no diplomacy at all, eventually they will have nuclear weapons. At that point, it becomes a much different ball game. Is it not worth six months of seeing, just it's seeing on choice. the outside? It's a false choice, Wait a Bob. second, Jonathan. It's a false you choice. stick to finance, let me stick to foreign policy. The, the, if, if it's not worth six months to see if there's a way to get a deal, it, well, it's a false choice. And by the way, Either it's not weapons-grade material they're making. It's 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 material. That... I think the most dangerous well, part well, of this how, is we've legitimized how, how does, them. How does, how does we've, that's how does what we've done. Guys, I, I know Bob, how, how does Bob with lit a fire in a crowded room right now. Because let me go around the horn. John, Michelle, and then Wayne. Let's go. Well, how does negotiating and appeasing people who chant death to Israel, death to America, keeping us safe? You can't reason, Bob, with somebody who literally oh, has doing a gun to Nothing's your head. keeping us safe, case, is that right? It's, it's the Iranian. No, the president should say, Iran, you have one week to turn over your entire nuclear stock. Or we're going to nuke you. We are bombing you. We're all you. We're all flatting you. That's how you deal with it. And you can't get to that We don't owe them anything. God, thank God you're in We don't owe them anything. They are the weak ones. And we went in there and we came out looking like the weak ones. The sanctions did work. That's why they came to the negotiations. Iran is stronger to today this... than it's been in 30 years because of the Iraq war. They now have, they now dominate in the All Middle right, East. Right, go ahead, Michelle. Finish Thank your thought. Finish your thought. The point is, is that the most dangerous thing here is we've legitimized them. And now countries like China, they don't see Iran as toxic anymore. They don't see them as toxic as they did. And now we're going to see, uh, you know, we're going to see China yeah. working with them. I mean, this is dangerous. All right, let me go, Wayne, quick thought. Well, I just don't see this as a black and white thing. I would agree with Bob that things are, you can try certain things. I just think this particular initiative is idiotic. There, are, there should be initiatives on the table that you can try. This doesn't work. You've got to keep the sanctions there. You don't, when you've got a guy pinned in a wrestling match, you don't let him up and have another shot at him. You keep him right. pinned until you, you win right. the match. That's right, and you hit the yes. mat three times and he's Everybody out. Everybody in Cleveland, low minority, got Obama fall. You, you sign up if you're, you're on full steps, you on social security, you got low income, you disability. Ah, uh, yes, that's our good friend, the Obama phone lady. She's not in trouble. The trouble does continue for the Obama phone program, though. As the waste and fraud grows, the government is looking to find companies that provide the service. Jonathan, you say the government barking up the wrong tree, just hang up the program instead. Yeah, but Gary, uh, Eric, uh, business has the power to trade. Only government has the power to steal. That's exactly what this Obamacare uh, phone pro Obama phone program is. Uh, so it's not the abuse that's the problem. It's the, pr the phone program itself. Bob might try to suggest that we have such a thing as a right to a cell phone. There's no such thing. The entire program is immoral. It's a waste. It should be scrapped. You know what, Michelle? It seems like the bigger the program, the more waste, fraud, and abuse in it. Maybe this one, not so necessary. What say you? 
Not at all. Look, the Declaration of Independence doesn't say life, liberty, and an Obama phone. Why are we doing this? The government doesn't have, that's not part of their job. Are we going to start giving iPads and laptops? We spent in 2012 $2.2 billion in this program. It's time to cut it. It's riddled with fraud and waste. Cut the program. Stop giving out Obama phones. It's not a right. And Wayne, it, Michelle's right. Where does it stop? First, it's you know, a little help with housing, help with food, now a phone. What's next? Car. Um, I, maybe you get, but they'll buy a house. Where, where does it stop? Well, I think, Eric, it all starts, and forgetting where it stops, it all starts with the word need. We need this. And everybody says, oh, we well, have to have this. We need that. And the government is supposed to be the person who supplies this. That is the beginning of a fraudulent uh, 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 transaction right away. So it's rife for fraud. It's rife for all of these programs that the federal government runs are riddled with fraud. That's why. Okay, go ahead, Bobby. Do you want to you well, want to defend I, I, the program? Just, just a couple of things. One, it, it, this was a program that was started under a Republican administration, under the Bush administration. One, two. Yeah, it but it wasn't a cell phone. It wasn't a landline. But okay, it, keep going. It, it was nonetheless. It was started under the uh, Bush administration. But that's all right. I have, I think it was a good idea. It now, actually started is, under is, Reagan. Are you okay. gonna? You want to take the block here? <laughs> No, go, go, go ahead, go ahead, Bob. Good, please. Thank you very much. Uh, I got a right to speak to here, right? Uh, the and the other thing I would say about it is that I do think it does have waste forward to Bruce in it. It does. But for all the people who've used these phones to call in medical help when they've been very, very sick, particularly elderly people, I want you to go and take their phones right, away from see if you feel better. We made, jump in. We we made hey, a hey, start. I know out everyone of this wants to jump here. in. Hey, just can I just clarify a couple of things, Bob? The program ballooned under President Obama, number one. And number two, if that's yeah. the case, if you're worried about emergency phone calls, why not ha hand out Obama phones that can only dial 911? Well, uh, because why? Let's say you want to call the pharmacy. Let's say you want to call your brother oh to come and take care of you. Well, well yeah. Michelle, you're right. sitting down we in gotta Miami. Go. We got a go. nice time. We got to go. Another reason, another reason. Another reason, reason why about cashing this. in should be an hour. We'd it love to have more time. We're going to say thank you to Michelle Fields and Bob Beckel for joining us this week.